Benefit to a governor declaring a state of emergency is it frees them up to make quick decisions when it comes to resources and funds. Idaho has never had such a state of emergency last so long, nor has it received so much money from the federal government to help deal with one, which is why Idaho lawmakers believe they should have been more involved in deciding how that money is dealt out. One of their main concerns coming into this year's session, in fact. Well, here we are three weeks into said session, and there's still $900 million in COVID aid waiting to be spent, part of a, another federal aid package sent to the states late last year. This is money that could go to help people with child care costs, meals on wheels, and rental assistance. So why is the money just sitting there? And is this how long it would take the legislature to respond during an emergency if they were to pull those powers from the governor? Joe Paris found the answers for us and also spoke with lawmakers that are calling on the legislature to get the ball rolling and get the aid out the door to those people who need it. With $900 million in federal aid still waiting to be approved by the Idaho legislature, some lawmakers say they're frustrated about the pace of approval. Everybody is wrestling with control and having discussions about what money and, you know, do people really need it and, you know, making some pretty um, unflattering comments. And I, I assure you, people need it and we need to approve it and get it out the door. Democrat Senator Melissa Wintrow points to the $164 million in aid earmarked for rental assistance as an example of aid the community needs now. In reality, she says, weeks ago. I, I think like the average rent we're looking at right now for folks is like $1,200. It's outrageous. Yeah. People can't live. They need the support. 39 Idaho affordable housing advocacy groups agree. They sent this letter to the Joint Finance and Appropriations Committee asking them to quickly approve $164 million in emergency rental assistance funds allocated to Idaho in the most recent federal relief package. In a statement, the group wrote, quote, Approval of the full allocation has been delayed despite widespread housing instability and a lack of access to statewide rental assistance. A continued delay or failure to approve these funds will result in devastating consequences for Idaho's renters, landlords, and the economy. So what is the holdup? House Majority Caucus Chair Republican Megan Blanksma explains it comes down to how Governor Brad Little included the aid in the state's overall budget. The $900 million in relief is actually in supplemental budgets. Some of it can stand alone. Some of it the governor asked that we embed in agency budgets. So that's why it hasn't all come out at once. Blanksma says that because Governor Little allocated money as supplemental items to agency budgets, they need to go through the thorough JFAC process. Now, Wintrow says she understands there is a process that needs to be done, but that things need to be sped up. This comes as some Idaho lawmakers are calling for the ability to call themselves back into session to make decisions on things like how emergency federal aid is spent. Critics say the Idaho legislature is moving very slowly compared to how Governor Little allocated over a billion dollars of COVID relief by executive order. Wintrow says that process wasn't perfect, but it got aid to people who needed it more quickly. So now that we're in session, we're in the driver's seat, you know, but where is the supplemental? It's in the trunk, right? <laughs> and um, if we want to be in the driver's seat, prove to our citizens that we can efficiently and, and effectively make decisions to help them. Blanksmith says she believes the Idaho legislature can work quickly on relief items, but again, she says this specifically comes down to how Governor Little outlined his budget to JFAC. She says lawmakers are working to speed that process up. They are working through a schedule, so I do know that they are reviewing to see if they can move anything at a faster speed. I reached out to Governor Little's office about the speed of getting relief out. They responded saying, quote, Governor Little is working closely with JFAC on all of his budget recommendations and will continue to do so. I, I deeply respect my colleagues. I appreciate uh, the positions they're in, uh, but I would ask us to act and act a little more quickly in the best interests of the citizens who are in need. So as usual, Joe, the devil is in the details and it's how the governor lined up this money to be spent and divvied up before it gets out to everybody else. But how would JFAC speed things up? What would that look like? 
Yeah, as you heard Representative uh, Blainspa kind of refer to is there's actually a schedule that JFAC goes through every single time that they start the legislature and they go really agency by agency. They get presentations so they can get some backstory and some full context of the budgets. And then from there they can start crafting the budget and really get it submitted and approved to the House and through the Senate. Now that schedule ostensibly could be shuffled around. You could argue maybe things could be moved from one day to another or you could speed up how that schedule goes. For now though, Brian, though, it's kind of wait and see. Um, the hope is though is that that aid is out the door quickly. I know the Senate and the House are both expecting it to be out of JFAC shortly and they want to act on it. And so, for example, like the city of Boise just yesterday approved eleven and a half million dollars in rental assistance, part of a care package out to its citizens. So it can be done kind of quickly. I understand the state's a much bigger entity, but thanks, Joe.